Alrighty then, hello and once again, good evening YouTube, welcome back to some more GT2, Gran Turismo 2 time. And as you can see by the car that I'm driving right now, um, yes, you probably could have assumed from the previous part what my plan was for today, and that was to take the PT Spider to the MR series. And that was in fact the plan until exactly 15 seconds ago when I went down to the old tuning shop in South City, scenic South City where the Plymouth dealership is. And you'll notice that uh, we'll go to the turbo here, start off just fine there, and there's no turbo upgrades. And that's fine. That's fine. There's a lot of cars in this game that don't have turbo upgrades. We'll just do the NA upgrade instead. That'll be a good replacement for that. They, you can't do that either. So, basically, you can't upgrade the PT Spider in any capacity. You can, you can put in five extra horsepower in this for two grand, but no, no, it's, it's virtually worthless. So, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. This car is basically worthless. So, that's phenomenal news. But, but all hope is not lost. All hope is in fact not lost. We can still recover this. We're gonna go over to East City because that's where all the good cars are because this game was made in Japan. And we're gonna go to the Toyota dealership and we're gonna go to used. We're gonna take a look at some used Yoders. Used Yoders. And we got an MR2 here. That's, that's, that is an option for the MR series, but it's worse than this car and we're not, and like upgrading it is just gonna be, you know, just wasting money. Look at this Sprinter Trueno GT Apex. It's a rear-wheel drive car. Amazing. It's a rear-wheel drive car with virtually no picks. Very cool indeed. Toyota Celica GT4. It says it says it's a four-door, I think. It's just no, it's a it's a 4J. No, it's it's not a four-door, it's a 4J. Completely different. Oh, that's not a good color. Ooh, that's rough. That's like the color of my of the of the frosting I used on that cake. 251. Oh my god, it's a four-wheel drive. Never mind. I thought this was a rear-wheel drive. What am I doing? Okay, you can't I can't lie. You can't you can't deny that's pretty hot. This is pretty hot. We are going to be purchasing this. It's a bit of a spend, but I'm confident that this car is going to be a very good, very good option. And since we're already in the Toyota dealership, we can take a glance into the tuning shop and see if the uh, see if the actual HP goes up or down. And it appears 296. Um, that's a problem because the reason that I bought this was to do a bunch of races where the required horsepower is 295. And if this is 296, well, we literally can't do it. Incredible. Okay, so forget everything that I've said so far. We're just gonna casually stroll over to the load screen and pretend like none of that happened. Alrighty then, it is that part of the video once again where you're going to ignore everything that I've said up until this point. Today we are going to be doing this car, the Sylvia K's from 1988. A whole four thousand dollars to get into this piece of art. I don't know where they're selling these for four thousand dollars. Definitely not here. That's for sure. Or maybe they are. Maybe they are. Maybe the Sylvias from the 80s are like the Civics from the 90s. No one really cares about them. So you may think we're doing the FR challenge. In fact, we are not. We're gonna jump all the way over here to the 80s Sports Car Cup. Yeah, boy. We're gonna be doing the first race there. I, I don't. I don't know what it said. I wasn't paying attention. I just clicked race now. We're gonna go. It's trial mount. Okay. I thought I. I thought I barely caught a glimpse of the name. So this will be our actual first trip to trial mountain in this entire playthrough. Oh my goodness gracious! Is it just as good in this game as it is in future installations? We're about to find out as we. Begin the 80 sports car cup. There's not a lot of 80 sports cars in this game. I guess you could define I mean, I guess you could say that this AMC gremlin to my right is an 80 sports car. I guess I Mean I ain't gonna stop you from saying it obviously, but we are in fact in a Sylvia Q. I think Yeah, this should be a Sylvia Q 
So the QAnon Sylvia. In fact, here we are. So this is Trial Mountain. This is the worst corner in the game. It brings back uh, some not so not so hot memories. But look at just lush. Look at this lush green landscape with the brown rocks. Man, oh man, they they all oh, this race is three laps long. Oh my lord, it's the longest race that we've done yet. Three laps around this massive amalgamation of, of a track. That is incredible. That is incredible. You know what? I want to know what else is incredible? I'm not winning this race. They are uh, they are a solid half second ahead of me, and this guy in second is going for the lead, which means that he's even faster than he's letting on right now. We're just going to dive bomb them, I guess. Yes, there we go. That's how you take the lead in Gran Turismo 2. Let me tell you, right? Yeah, I'm used to this track. Like, I haven't played Gran Turismo, like, um, religiously since, like, I would say 2013. Except for when I played through this game in 2016 or 2017, like I said a couple of episodes ago, but, um... Yeah, but Trial Mountain, I've just, I've just been here so many times. I've just raced here for so long that basically I have this place down pat. And we, and we all know the best turn in the entire game right here. Yeah, the big ol' ramp, which isn't even that big ol' in this game. I don't know if they extended the hill in future installations, but... Yeah, but you can see what they were going through for in this game, like this. But the but the problem is, is that it's a PS2, so this is all just a very muddy. Like you, you like these are supposed to be like hillsides, but like in future games, this is all rocks. This is all like clay-colored rocks and stuff. That's the most brown that it gets is a clay coloring, but it's mostly gray. But in this, it's like brown. It's like poopy. Yeah. PS1, not the, uh, not, not regarded as one of the most amazing looking consoles to ever exist in the history of consoles. But I am winning. Don't you worry about that. I am winning for the time being. We'll see if I can finish this one off. In this game, you can hear everyone else's engine over yours. So when someone's behind you, you can distinctly hear their engine and you know that they're up your ass and they're just going to be coming after you. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of that f one Unity game, Vapor. I have the same exact terrifying feelings here. I should play that game again sometime, dude. Anyway, we beat the Nissan March Super Turbo, at least, so that's positive. I only won this race by one second, which is a bit concerning, considering the fact that the next races that we have to do are, like, double the horsepower that this car has, so... Yeah, that's very cool indeed. But we did get $7,000, so I've already basically doubled the amount of money that I had. This car already doubled itself as far as earnings are concerned. That's it's pretty amazing. And there you have that, so 345 is the amount of horsepower that I need. I'm not assuming I can win this without any upgrades, but let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot just to pad out this episode. Oh my fucking god, I didn't refill my water. Alright, well here we are. I think we're racing against these. See, the reason I say that is because they're like no other 80s, you know, Japanese cars that are like, you know, 200 horsepower or anything. It's like, I just don't believe that these guys are going to spawn in with anything that could beat me. Anyway, Special Stage Route 5. Hey, another track we haven't been to yet. This is a staple of the series, and it's absolutely gorgeous in every other game. This game, I mean, well, it's trying. It's You, you can't fault it for trying. Oh my. Alright, well, we're turning, kind of-ish. There we go. Hey, second place. Let's go, dude. Yeah, here's another track that I'm used to, because this was in Gran Turismo 3, so I've played it a lot. So I know I haven't uploaded that up episode yet, but I was talking before about how Gran Turismo 3 had barely any content compared to this, and compared to, like, Gran Turismo 4. And, like, what are the, what is the reason for that? Well, the only real plausible explanation is that, you know, they had a limited development time for Gran Turismo 3. They, like, the game came out in 2001, and, like, the PS1 came out the year before, or PS2 came out before the year before. And, like, 
you know, they only had so much time to like completely build the they build the physics engine from the ground up onto the PS2. And like I and I feel like that's the reason why they made the Gran Turismo prologue for the PS3 like five years before releasing Gran Turismo 5. Like they didn't want they didn't want just a throwaway game in their line like they did for 3 and 1. But like, the thing is, is that 5 and 6, like 6 is just basically, you know, a worse 5. Oh, I'm spinning out, speaking of worse. Okay, so I don't, I mean, I did, I did a lot better in this race than I thought I would. Before that, obviously. I was doing, I was doing pretty solid for a Sylvia Q. With basically, with literally no upgrades. Okay, you know what? You need you guys need to stop. Okay? I wasn't winning already. I just need the extra money to stuff into upgrades, okay? So please stop existing. And this car does have five gears, so once once we do upgrade this, it's gonna be it's gonna be swift. It's gonna be swift. Alright, was there any reason in finishing that race? Two thousand. I mean I could buy a racing chip with that, I guess. I could probably have done Deep Forest without any upgrades. It's just that long straightaway. Uh, what am I driving? I'm driving a Nissan. Um, it's just that long straightaway into the special stage that I just need that extra power for. So I'm guessing that this is going to be a turbo car because it's from Japan. Yes, I'm very smart. Um, we can get 247. Ooh, 293. Mmm. 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 Aha. Let's see what other upgrades it has before we go gung-ho into that. What is the computer going to do? Literally nothing. That's cool. I'm guessing this just does not have NA tune-up. Yeah, for some reason, some cars have NA tune-up and turbo. Some don't. It's, uh, it's very odd. Um, we're going to do this. 247, 13,500 for that. Pretty solid upgrade. So that's good. We're going to use that. Can we also get the intercooler? Yes, we can. Yeah, we'll just add it on. See, that's that's what that's what the difference is right there. You have to have the uh, actual um the turbo installation before the intercooler does anything. I think that's cool. I think that's a cool idea. 276. Oh, the magic number. We have to have the magic number. There it is. Beautiful. 276. Now we're working. Now we're working with some pace. But wait, there's more. I'm not gonna stop there. We're also gonna slap on some weight reduction just because stage one is so cheap and it, you know, it actually makes like a difference. Yeah. We're gonna finish off the 80s thingamajig and potentially we could throw this car into the FR, F, F, not FF, but the FR challenge. I might want to slap a couple more upgrades before I try that because midfield is 493. That's uh, that's a bit rough. Um I don't think this is a sedan, but we could maybe do the le the uh, no, we cannot do the luxury sedan. That's a bit more than I was bargaining for on that one. We can do 80 sports car cup though. So, let's do that. And we're back at special stage route 5. Let's see if we can immediately notice the difference in performance. Was it spinning the tires before? Oh yeah, oh look at that. Look at that dial, just go up and stuff. Yeah, oh we're making passes already. Oh, we're overpowered. Oh, you'll love to see it. Man, I really should have just got the sprinter. Look at that thing, look at that work of art, dude. It's so good. My first car ever, oh, in Gran Turismo 3 was a Sprinter. So, like, it's not just the internet that makes me love that car. It, 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 it actually is a nostalgic thing for me. Never saw Initial D, but I did buy a Sprinter in Gran Turismo 3. That, that, that would make a good line in a rap. Oh, I never did watch the Initial D, but I sure as hell bought a Sprinter in GT3. Yeah, I'm still good at rapping. Look up my uh, hard time rap. <laughs> oh, it's horrible. Anyway, we're in the lead by a hefty margin. Not a hefty margin, but like a way bigger margin than I was in the previous attempt. So. 
I'd say we got this one pretty much under wraps. Very cool, high fives all around to the team, we did it. Oh yeah, look at me, I'm redlining now. See, I didn't even, I barely got into fifth gear before we hit the tunnel last time. Now I'm redlining hitting the tunnel this time. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Very good stuff. Very good stuff, it's a very solid car now. It's amazing what just a couple of minor tweaks can do to your vehicle to make it into a supreme racing champion. Can we not do this? Can we not do this? Why would you do that? It's just a slight right angle turn. There was barely any turn there. And you're fucking spinning in a 360. Incredible. And now the question becomes, can I do the exact same thing in all three laps and run into the little juddy out bit and completely ruin my pace for the final stretch. No, finally I have avoided that thing, therefore you can basically stick a f the figurative fork into it and call it a race. Yes, um, the, if these races get any longer than three laps, it's going to be um, less about the challenge and more about the making sure that I win it on the first try so I don't have to do the entire thing again. Kind of thing. Finish! 135 lap. 506 in the race. And yeah. Oh look at that. The Corolla up third, dude. The Nissan March was beating out these guys. That's very sad. Very sad indeed. But the good thing about this is that every single time you win one of these races past the first screen, you win a new car after every single race. Which is pretty sick. So we're going to finish off this series with three new cars. It's insane. There's so many options that we have. And I can sell those useless cars that I can't drive for profit. And then that'll be how I make all my money from here on out. It'll be a good time. It'll be a good time. You're going to have to trust me though. You're going to have to put that fat faith into me. And now for the final race in the 80 Sports Car Cup at Deep Forest. Once again, honestly, I kind of wish I didn't buy any upgrades for this so I could attempt this race before the upgrades, but still, still, we're going to give it a shot. We're going to see what they got. All right, is this our first trip to Deep Forest Raceway? We're going to all the classics now. The thing about it is that all these tracks were new when this game came out. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh, Splitter loves Deep Forest. I mean... Yeah. We're playing the game. Look at this sunset, though. Oh, my God. Why is this sunset so much more pleasant than the actual sunset version of uh, Deep Forest in Gran Turismo 3? Why is Gran Turismo 3 such a letdown? I, I play Gran Turismo 3 for basically the majority of my life, and yet every single time I pop in a new Gran Turismo, I, I'm given reasons why Gran Turismo 3 was not good. It's a curse. And I actually think that I like the Corolla with the with the regular lights instead of the uh, flip-up lights. Instead of the Corvette lights, if you will. I actually think I like the Corolla with the regular lights more. Alright, now don't 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 at me on Twitter about it or anything, but I just I just kinda like it better that way. I've never really been that big of a fan of flip-up lights. I think they're tacky. Anyway, these guys are beating and banging behind me, and they're just driving around me on the inside because apparently the Sprinter is faster than this Sylvia with a um, turbo upgrade. So that's that's phenomenal news, actually. And you don't need to slow down that much here. Most of the time, you can actually flat foot that. I don't know if that's the case in this game, but in most games, you can flat foot that. Anyway, that's one lap around Deep Forest. There's like a mountain back there, I guess. Maybe this is a uh, Colorado. That's what it reminded me of back there, the one time that I was in Colorado. <laughs> and I didn't even leave the airport, dude. I've been nowhere, okay? Let me just tell you, I have done exactly zero traveling. I did literally zero traveling before I turned 21. And then I went to Phoenix, and I went to Texas. I spent the majority of the time in Louisiana, which was fun. I definitely enjoyed Louisiana. But I did have to stand in the Colorado airport at Denver for a long time, and I got to see them, got to see them snow-capped mountains. They were pretty cool, pretty cool, I gotta say.
It was an aesthetic, to say the least. There was a lot of there was a lot of smog. Well, actually, you know what? I'm I'm guessing that the pollution problem has gotten better. I mean, maybe not better, but like it's been mitigated due to uh, oh the plague. I'm sure it was like worse back in like 2019. So I probably you know it was already 2021 when I went there, but like. It was probably better than uh, than it was, is what I'm trying to say. Is that it's an improvement from where it was at one point. Anyway, this race is very easy, so I'll see you at the end. See, this is this is this is exactly what I meant when I say that I could have probably won this without the upgrades, just because like there, like this straightaway is not nearly as long as the special stage straightaway, and even then I was still like, I pretty much had that race won at special stage. It's just the problem of getting bounced back on the stupid indent. And then them having like an extra 50 to 100 horsepower on me on that straightaway was just killing me. But now that I got these upgrades in this car, now this is the peak Sylvia. This is the, uh, this is top tier stuff. You know, I feel like it's not too much to ask for to not be like this. Why? Fuck you, you fucking prick. sure what in the fuck exactly was different about this race, but this green asshole was like in front of me for half of it. I'm guessing it was another Sylvia, but at the same time, like, well, what the fuck? Yeah, it's the exact same car that I'm in, and yet he was just sitting in front of me for, for a long time. It's like, bruh, how? What did I do differently that time? Stupid shitty game. Anyway. That's that race, um, 8,000 on that one, so made back most of the upgrades that I spent on this at this point. But we're not done with this car yet, I do believe that there is one more race for sure that we can drive this thing in, so that's good. That's good. Why don't we go and take a glance at the fat new cars that I've gotten as a result of doing these fine races. Uh, after the long ass loading screens of course. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why the second screen exists. Like, just give me an option to save the replay in the replay. Why does that second screen needs to be need to exist? I don't get it, dude. Wait, there's an arrow. Oh shit! Oh, there's more races. Oh, that's unfortunate. Okay, well, Seattle Circuit. Oh, we're not done. Oh no. The 80s sports car series continues. Oh, well now we're now we're not gonna have any trouble getting this past 20 minutes. Fucking A, right, let's go. Alright, Seattle Circuit. Uh, this car probably has decent gear ratios for here. I think if it's got decent gear ratios for Seattle or uh, Deep Forest, it should be fine here. Let's see what the competition looks like. Another, like... Another gremlin-shaped car, so that's concerning. This is a good car, dude. This is this is a good car. Oh, they're fast. Oh, they're driving off into the distance. Shit, I have to be a good driver to win this? Well, that's unfortunate. That is unfortunate to say the least. Oh my. Oh, oh. Oh, was that the Dat Sun? Look at that. Hey, there's a Dat Sun that I couldn't buy because I couldn't afford it by like two grand. Anyway, this car doesn't this car doesn't drive. 
Oh my, this is a three lap race. Oh great. And they're so far out ahead of me that they are out outrunning the draw distance. Oh, that's a problem. That's an issue. Outrunning the draw distance is not great. That means that they're pretty swift. I wonder what he's driving, dude. Look at that. Well, if I'd known that there was another page of these, I probably would have went with a stronger car for this. I mean, there wasn't many options. There were just there was just not a lot of options for me to be able to buy cars for this league. It's like basically the game's written me into the corner of having to just stuff turbos into these things, which is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing by any stretch of the imagination. Stuffing turbos into cars is never a negative. Well, I mean, when it comes to the bank account, it's a negative, but, I mean, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, we're going to take this corner and we're going to come out in second. Or we're not going to come out in second because turning is very difficult in this game. You do too much of it, in fact. It just fucking slides. A hundred percent steering input at all times is not good. This is not a good representation of driving. Because I, I, I either have to not turn and just body slam the wall after every corner and hope that it doesn't spin me out that way, or I actually attempt to make the turn and it just fucking... And just fucking th five and a half seconds. Okay, so we're not winning that race. I could get a racing chip for six horsepower. That's that's more than no horsepower. Guess we'll equip that. You do the port polish for fucking four. I mean, it's 5,500 to put the upgrade in. Like, if I'm not even getting a return, like, if I can't divide the amount of horsepower increase that I get by a thousand, and come up with that same amount, like, it's not worth it. Any racing modification for this car? I'm guessing yes. Of course there's a racing modification for this car. Look at that! Look at that! Oh, that's so good! That's actually good. I, I actually love that. Okay, well, it's 82,000, and I don't actually know what the racing modification actually does. I'm not sure if it's actually changing anything. Ah, uh, let's give racing tires a shot. I mean, why not? And I guess I'll do the port polish. Whatever, it's fine. I guess brakes would probably be a good thing to choose as well. We'll give that a shot. Hopefully this makes a difference. Let's go back to the race and give it a try. Just without realizing that I had all of those upgrades that to get up to 276 horsepower. And after all the upgrades that I just put into it, we've only gone up to uh, 286. So we've changed almost nothing. Anyway, hopefully they spawn something more manageable in this race for me to deal with. Instead of the- oh, now we're boogieing. Oh, now we've got some pace. Oh yeah, there goes someone else into the lead. Oh, I think they might have the magic set up here. Yeah, this was like a Civic that was up front. And we're spinning out. How original. Dude, I don't even know. I just made up three seconds in that half lap. But, like, I threw away the win at that first attempt at the Deep Forest race. I don't get it. Why am I either really, really good or awful? There is no in-between. There is no just me like, okay, we could, we could probably win this race. Oh, I did win this race. No, it's either uh, there's no chance that I'm going to win this race or I'm going to win this race by a full lap. There's no in-between. I don't get it. I don't get it. It's annoying. What I'm trying to say is I'm annoyed. Oh, my God. Speaking of annoyed, I hate, hate this game. I was actually unironically thinking about trying to plug my G29 into the thing at the same exact spot. Go! Oh my fucking god, now I'm six seconds back, even though I should be right up the leader's ass. But no, it's gonna spin in the exact same spot in the exact same way, even though it was a completely different taking of the corner. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes fucking sense. This game sucks. And now I'm two and a half seconds. I made up four seconds in that stretch. And you're telling me that I'm not gonna win this still? Dude. I feel like I barely did anything in the upgrade department and now I'm just an unstoppable force of nature. Well actually I, I, I am a stoppable force of nature. Because the only thing that I can do is turn at 100% capacity. At all times. So I'm basically stuck. Turning way more than I actually want to turn, and spinning out every single time that we go to the exact same corner. It's cool. It's a really fun thing. 
I think it's really fun how I'm probably going to spin out in the exact same spot in the exact same way again. Look at that. It did. It, it tried. I was ready for it that time, though. You saw it try, though. But I was on it. Oh my god, this car is horrible. After all the shit that I've been through in this race, how am I actually about to come and win this? Well, I'm not. Because I just said that I'm about to win, so there's no chance that I actually win. Oh my. Oh my. Okay, well. Mmm. 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 Yes. That's what I wanted to do. You got it, game. You figured it out. Yep, I'm gonna have to do this race again. Even though I should have won it. On multiple occasions, in fact. Nah, I'm not. I'm not gonna win it. I'm not gonna win it. Yep, look at me. Right fucking up is God, this fucking controller! Yeah, cool. Can't wait to waste another five and a half minutes of my life doing this race again. Wow, would you look at that, when the game isn't arbitrarily spinning me out for absolutely no reason, I win without any contest. Truly a remarkable discovery. How, by how, by how much? And to whom? Two seconds. Amazing. This game sucks. And at long last, we get the money. Not the money yet, now the money. 8,000 and a new car. Yay. Another useless car that I have absolute, that has absolutely no purpose. <laughs> oh, fun. We still got one more race, it's Tahiti Road, so it's just a bunch of straight lines and stuff, so... Should only be like one problematic spot in there. That I will most likely spin out on all three laps, and lose, and have to do over again. So, you have that to look forward to. Knock knock, who's there? Tahiti Road. Tahiti Road who? Tahiti Road is the next race that we're gonna do. In fact. And the loading screen is going to take a very long time, because that's that's what this game does, is have long loading screens. I wonder what we're going to face off against. Hopefully it's nothing too terrifying. Yeah, you can see, like, you can see those little hair, mini hairpin things down there. Not even hairpins. They're more so just like these. They're very acute angle corners, but not hairpinny. If you know, they, they look like the Acura logo. Yeah, there we go. It's like the tip of the Acura logo. It's an Acura term. I, that is my new, I have officially coined a new racing terminology for these corners at Tahiti Road. These are Acura tops. My goodness gracious. Let's get, little. Well, we're heading towards the first one. This is not the first one, but it's close to the first one. This is the first one right here. Into the first Acura tip, top, whatever I said before. Yeah, I took it very carefully. I, I, I basically what I've learned, what I've learned today is that what you need to do is you need to break in a straight line, and when you're turning, don't actually hold the button, just tap it. Tap the button, let it ease through the corner because we, we both know that you're not going to survive any corner if you're using a hundred percent. This is basically just. You remember how the Ford GTs and Ford Racing sucked to drive? Well, we basically just have to drive like we're driving a Ford GT at all times. I, I don't even think there's a... There might be a Ford GT in this game. It's possible. It's possible. Oh, no. Okay, so as it turns out, I'm fast. Hmm. Where has this been? Where exactly has this been? Maybe I could have gotten this with no upgrades. Tee hee. No, I disagree. Yeah, I'm glad I got all the upgrades, but um, it's unfortunate that we had to spend so much on them, but it's alright. It's alright. There's still one more race that we can uh, we can run this one in, for sure. We could maybe even uh, take a gander at the FR challenge. Because I would much prefer to have like an FR race car to do that with, but like, you know... There's not too many FR race cars that have under, two, under 300 horsepower, but I mean, they, they exist. I know they exist in Grand Trees before and 5. I'm not sure about this one, though. We'll have to wait and find out. Yeah, I'm winning by quite a bit. Okay, so, as it turns out, this is the easiest $10,000 that I've made in a while. Alright, so as it turns out, that was the easiest race that I've done in a long time, in fact. 
Yeah. Cool. Alright, well that was a nice break from the stupidity that was the previous race. Yeah, we're just gonna win that by 2.5 seconds. Just a casual 2.5 seconds. The Toyota Celica GT4 still running 12 seconds off the pace is that loser. Wow. Okay, well, that's that. That was, that was good. Hey, $10,000 and a new car. Woo! Let's go check out those cars and most likely sell all of them because they all suck. Maybe we can use one of them in a future race, but I'm not exactly holding my breath. And yes, that was a five race series in the, uh, in an 80 sports car cup. I guess it's just something about Tahiti that makes these AI drivers just suck ass. Okay, so it's a Muggin Integra and oh! Skyline Silhouette Formula R30, hello! We got ourselves a touring car. A interesting. It's 555 horsepower, that's pretty solid, and a Muggin Integra. Oh baby. Oh baby. Oh baby baby. That's 194 stock. I'm gonna get in this quick. Hang on, hang on, hang on. This episode's not over yet. We're gonna we're gonna take a look at the races because I know that the FF challenge has like really high horsepower, but we just did those 80 sports car races with like nothing. FF challenge up to 394. Yeah, up to 295 there at Tahiti Road, which he just did. Yeah. Yeah, we could take the Muggin and take her to that. that that's me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we could. We absolutely could. Let's see, the Muggin Civic might actually be better. No, it's not better. Okay, never mind. But yeah, this is very, very interesting. The Skyline Silhouette Formula R30 in parentheses. That's $125,000 of value right there. We could very well take that to multiple races, especially the touring car races. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. This game just got a lot more interesting with that. But in any case, this has been another episode of this game, Gran Turismo 2. This episode went on for way longer than I expected it to. <laughs> and that is unfortunate. So, we'll, just, we'll be back next time with some more of this game. We will not be driving this, but I mean, you never know. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. Bye! Fuck! 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 I just pushed Piglet into a power-up! No! Go away! Go away! Ah! 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 This is rape! God damn it, this... This is rape! Ah, where's my rape whistle? <laughs>